A warm welcome back to our Steam Machines. This is Jack from Conductive Music with a session exploring history, music and coding entitled Fire Fire. This is Steam Corner and at the end of the session today you will have coded your very own computer game in relation to the Great Fire of London. The coding we'll be using is available on the link below. So give it a click on your tablet or computer to get yourself started. As ever, thanks to Arts Council England and our partners for making these sessions possible. Okay, Steam Machines, welcome to 1666, the date of the Great Fire of London. And today we're going to be using that figure here as our countdown. So this is eventually going to go back to zero, and then we'll find out if we've won the game or not. And the game is going to be won by our character here, taking water in buckets from the Thames. Now that's the word here in the arrow. It's actually the river that runs through the capital city, London. And it's a bit of a weird world. Just look at it with me for a second. Can you see it starts with a T and an H, which you usually pronounce as th, like them or the. But this is actually, you get rid of the H, it's just pronounced Thames. So that's, uh, that's one to look for, uh, for yourself. And that's the source of the water that we're going to be pouring on the Great Fire to hopefully extinguish it. But before we do that, we need to go and we need to do some coding on these arrows here because it's going to help our main character move around the screen. So let's scroll down on our sprite menu here to find our arrows and see where our code's going to begin. So here we go. This is our right arrow. And what do we have already on here? We have an instruction when this sprite is clicked, broadcast a message called right. Okay, now we're gonna scroll back up to our main character and let's have a look here. Have we got, there we go, at the top, we've got this bit here and it says, when I receive right. So every time we click on the right one here, um, she's going to receive this code called a uh, message called right and then we can use that to move her around the screen so this is very important because a lot of the scratch programs use this idea of an axis if you think of the screen as a big cross um, so we've got a line going down the screen and we've got a line going across the screen. The line going across the screen is going to be known as our X axis. So can you see here, let me just scroll up. We've got some code in the motion in this blue menu to change X by 10. And what the computer understands that to be is anything going from left to right. So if I wanted to make our character go from where she is at the moment all the way across the screen, I'd need to keep on adding value to X. And conversely, if I wanted to go the other way to the left, I need to take value from X. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to put this block on here. When I receive right, change X by, um, and let's say 15, because I think that's probably quite a good one. And then the next one, let's drag another block on. Uh, when I receive left, let's do the opposite. Let's do minus 15. So let me just put those numbers in. And now when I click on the left and right arrows, you should be able to see her, there we go. She's moving around like that, that's pretty good. And now I need to do the same for up and down. So when I receive up, now it's not gonna be X we change in this case, it's gonna be this one here, it's gonna be Y. So let's add value to Y when we wanna go up and we'll take value off Y when we want to go down. So let me just click that in here. I'll make that minus 10. There we go. So those are your first four things to code and then try moving your character around screen. Okay, off you go. Okay, so you've just activated the code and in a second, we're gonna see this timer start to, there we go, it starts to run down. Um, now, the if you've managed to put that code in, you will notice that when we start moving our character around, left and right work fine. Then we also have up and down. Now, if we go up, let's look what happens. So that piece of code there looks like Abby, our main character, is going away from us. It gives us a sense of perspective. 
And that code here is just activated by this PC. So I just wanted to show that to you. So we've used a variable uh, to create the size. And what this basically means is when um, Abby moves up the screen, so remember we call that our Y position. When her Y position goes um, higher, when it gets higher in number, then we actually use that to reduce the size of the character. So even though it looks a bit tricky here, this code is, is quite simple. It just means the higher she goes up the screen, the smaller she gets. So it looks like she's actually going into the distance for us, when actually she's just shrinking on the screen. And I've stopped her there getting any higher than a certain point, point of that, because otherwise she'd just keep on going all the way up to the top of the screen. It wouldn't look very realistic. In this game, you'll be given a countdown from 1,666. Why? Because 1666 was the date of the Great Fire of London. The sources we use to tell us about the Great Fire of London are sources such as Samuel Pepys' diary. Samuel Pepys was a member of Parliament a few years later after the fire, and during the Great Fire he kept a diary. It tells us a lot about the behaviour of Londoners and their reaction towards the Great Fire. This from his diary entry on the 2nd of September 1666. Having stayed and in an hour's time seen the fire rage every way and nobody to my sight endeavouring to quench it, but to remove their goods and leave all to the fire. And having seen it get as far as the steel yard and the wind mighty high and driving it into the city and everything after so long a drought proving combustible, even the very stones of churches and among other things, the poor steeple by which Mrs. X lives, and whereof my old schoolfellow Elbrow is parson, taken fire in the very top, and then burned till it fell down. Although it wasn't recorded by everybody, many people were believed to be involved in the process of uh, carrying water. They would form lines and pass buckets of water to each other to quickly get the water to where the fire was strongest. And actually King Charles II was involved in this process as well, um, some days into the fire. So that's a really interesting point to remember that our character here is actually emulating the behaviour of the king at the time. Buildings of the time in these areas were made of wood and clay, which made them very easily catch fire. The Great Fire was supposed to have been started in a bakery on Pudding Lane by a fire that was supposed to have been put out. Very quickly and in the dead of night, the fire crept into neighbouring properties and soon the Great Fire had started. Okay, so let's see how this game works. Give our green flag a click. Now I'm going to have to ask, oh, there we go. She's going to go and collect the bucket from the Thames. Now she's going to take it to the first house that has a problem. She's got to move into this square that says Pudding Lane. There we go. And then she can throw it. I'm just going to go and grab another bucket and show you that she has to be in that square saying Pudding Lane. So I can't throw it from here. It has to be within that square, that's okay there. And then throw it. And so the more time that goes down on our timer, the greater the number of houses gonna fire is gonna be. So it's your job to go to the houses as quick as you can and to pour water on them to save them. What this game is missing is some music. So bearing in mind the Great Fire started in a bakery, let's use the bread sprite at the bottom of the screen to code some music. So we're gonna add some music as we said and I want to ask a question. Have you heard of the song London's Burning? Well, I'm going to play you something and you can access this whenever you like by just clicking on this green button here. So let's have a listen. So 
So that was the song London's Burning and there's two things I want to say about that. If you uh, know the, the lyrics, the words for that, there's actually a bit of a problem with it because the, the lyrics say London's burning, London's burning, um, call the engines or fetch the engines and as we know there weren't any fire engines in London at that time because this is why we had people like our character here hurriedly trying to get water to the, um, the scene of the fire. So bear in mind if you do know the song that's something to, to look out for in the lyrics the second thing is the form of the music it's what we call a round and a round is a piece of music that you can play over itself so you can have two versions of it going at the same time and they complement each other and they work really well together so in this um, instance can you hear I think our higher voice our recorder voice comes in first and then our lower sounding either guitar or lute voice comes in underneath it. So have a listen again and see if you can pick out those two individual voices. <laughs> So your next challenge is going to be to code this round into the game. So we want it to code so that when you click on the bread, and don't forget because the Great Fathers believe to have started in the bakery, we're going to click on this bread and then we are going to be able to hear that exact thing. So you can reference it up here on the green button. But now I just like you to pull your attention to this one, which is sound. So click on the sound. Now you have eight pieces of this round that are broken up. So what I'd like you to do is try to put the pieces back together. So have a listen through and they're out of order, but they do fit together. So your first challenge is going to be to find all of the pieces of this that sound like the same instrument. So you have one higher pitched recorder and then you've got a lower pitched lute or a guitar and you should be able to put those together. So um, I'm going to give you a few minutes now just to go through that and organize them on the screen. OK, and I'll come back with a solution. All right, off you go. So I've divided these up, so I think they are all playing in the same instrument. Let me just check this first one. So my next challenge is to put these in order so that they play the individual lines of the round. So I'm going to give you a challenge to do that and just come back in a few minutes for the solution. Okay, so how did you get on? This is the solution, I think, for the recorder. Let's have a listen. There we go. And this one is for the guitar lute. And don't forget, there's going to be a bit of silence at the start of this one because this instrument here starts the round first. So let's have a listen. There's a little bit of silence as the recorder starts. <laughs> So now all we have to do is clip these under when this sprite is clicked and hopefully when we click on the bread they should play together. So let's have a listen. Okay, fantastic. Right, let's full screen it and have a go with everything intact. Okay, here we go. I might even choose to play the music in it as well. Okay, here we go.
We've come to the end of the session today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've had fun trying to pull out all of the great fire of London. I just need to take your attention to our Facebook, YouTube and Twitch accounts. If you see Conductive Music on there, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you go over to conductivemusic.uk, you'll find over 60 one hour projects for you to get your teeth stuck into. So click on the subscription link below. As ever, thank you to Arts Council England and our partners for the continuing support. Bye bye.